Hey guys, Lulu here. I do hope you're having a shit day. Wait, I'm actually a nice person. Or am I? Ah, uh, fuck it. Question. Have you ever been browsing Twitter, looking for Final Fantasy news, checking out the latest patch info, having a good old time, then like XQC's nose coming around a corner you get jump scared, like you got caught watching porn at school getting flashed with a big old pair of bazoinkers on a cat girl, or a female Vera smuggling a meat and two veggies that would give a horse insecurity issues. Well, you've probably been baptized with the what the fuck stick and found that you're Alice in Wonderland in the world of modding. If you are a casual Final Fantasy XIV player or PlayStation player, you might not even be aware of the world going on beneath a veil of shadows. You aren't fucking ready for this. The Final Fantasy modding community. Best buckle up, babe. This one is a shit show, and I'm all out of toilet paper. And the best part of this plan is... No one can stop me. Not even... The housing community. <laughs> <laughs> what the actual fuckity fuck fuck? One moment. You've reached the existential crisis hotline. How existential is your crisis? Ah, uh, yes, Lulu, um, aren't you using mods? Yeah, you, you, you just, just shut the fuck up. <coughs> so, yes, modding. It is a huge problem, and yes, it's fucking getting worse. I just want to say I am not making this video out of malice, but merely to shine a spotlight on a community that is much larger than people realize, and to inform the uninformed. I fully expect to piss off a massive part of the community for bringing this serious issue to light. I have to admit, it would make my fucking day to see these incels cry about it though. Anyway. Okay, let's go. What once was an unspoken part of the community that used to be kept it a secret SHUT YOUR FUCKING MOUTH! SHUT THE FUCK UP YOU CUNT! is now a glaring problem, shouting and meat spinning their way onto everyone's timeline. WHAT THE FUCK?! No longer is it a rare thing to see people brandishing modded out characters. Obviously I can't show you, but have a look for yourself. There is some fucked up shit there. Be careful though, it's like walking in on your mom and dad getting it on by accident. It's something you just can't unsee. Pandora's box has been officially opened and P. Diddy just handed them a bottle of fucking baby oil. God help my soul. So Lulu, what do you mean by modding? Well, modding is a quite broad term for it. I'll break it down though, as there are many different aspects to it. When people talk about mods, generally they're talking about texture replacements for your character. There is more to it than that. You can replace hair to look different, have full-blown outfits, body replacement mods which make your character nude. For the coomers out there, for those of you who like dances and emotes, there are also animation mods which can create unique dances or even import animations from other games such as Fortnite. It goes on endlessly. Aside from that, there are even plugins and launchers which allow you to cheat in raids or load tools which change things in-game whilst live. But wait, this is where shit gets underground. I'm about to break open the cheese sauce. There is a fully fucking blown black market going on, just minus Jabba the Hutt running the damn thing. With numerous modding discords, with hundreds of thousands of members, modders with their own communities numbering in the tens of thousands, with Patreon and Ko-fi subscribers, each of them making thousands of dollars per month by selling mods for the game. That's right, motherfucker. Okay, seriously, do you see the problem here? You're probably wondering, why are people buying mods? It's not like anyone else can see them. Well, as someone who's been amongst these people, it's actually an addiction. Usually, it's people in the G-Pose community who need their new outfit or hairstyle fix for their latest Twitter or Instagram photo update. Yeah, it's all fucking vanity. Bear with me, though. People are seriously willing to pay for that, and a lot of money too, even more so, especially when it comes to lewd outfits, ranging from 10 to $20 per outfit. There are people even commissioning out G-Pose services to people with the photographer's mods installed. It's absolutely fucking crazy. If there is something to be monetized in game, you best be fucking leave, it has been done. But wait, there's more. There is a tool called, ugh. Okay, I don't know how to fucking say this. So I might sound retarded, but bear with me. Anamnesis! Yeah, like that. 
What this tool allows you to do is, in real time, edit your character's race, gender, height, even change into your favorite NPC if you want. But not only that, allows you to have access to the appearance of every wearable item in game and change die in real time at no cost. It's only able to be seen by you alone, however, but for G-posing, this is fucking insane. If you thought that was fucking bad, it allows you the ability to use paid shop items, emotes, and dances. I mean, what is the point of buying a Fantasia that allows you to change your appearance to get that fix when you can get it for free with this tool? That is the fucking issue here. I mean, hey, if you want me to, I can take it even further. You can even dress up in a game master's clothing, which could be damaging as you could make a fake video pretending to be a game master. Oh yeah, before I forget, for those of you who care about your character, with this tool, people can straight up click on a person and copy and save their character with their glamour. You wouldn't even have a clue that this is happening. They can change your glamour, even strip your character naked if they wanted to. So I have to ask, how in the actual fuck has Square Enix not whipped out their huge donkey dick and issued a cease and desist yet? But wait, like Nintendo when reusing Pokemon assets for the third time said, I'm not fucking done yet. There is a launcher which you can download that attaches to your game called XIV Launcher. It's kind of like Battle.net that allows you to skip having to put your password in every time and jump straight to the character select screen. Hey, apart from security concerns aside that a third party add-on might be taking password data, it does a whole fucking laundry list ton more. So this launcher allows you to run community-made plugins which straight up change the game, allowing you to run mods, change camera restrictions, which are useful for raid cheating by the way, and much more. Speaking of more, how about a housing tool which allows you to bypass the housing system restrictions to place housing items anywhere you want, even outside of boundaries. With this, you can load presets of houses people have made and place them instantly in seconds, saving hours of work. There are numerous plugins, but I won't go into those either for the sake of time. So why hasn't Square Enix done anything about this? Because they fucking can't. Well, kinda. They don't actually have any way to detect third-party mods on your computer, and due to privacy laws, they are restricted from implementing hardware detection. Ah, oh, fuck me. Here is why it could be damaging. Anyone who might be interested in Final Fantasy XIV will have a false impression on the game just from social media alone. I think these tools are financially damaging to the game in the way they allow you to use paid shop items for free of charge. The game looks more like fucking second life these days. Tell me I'm wrong, motherfucker. I dare you. New players will think this is what the game is actually like. In reality, instead, we have to deal with this furry retard. My advice to Square Enix to counter this issue is releasing micro patches constantly so it would force modders to constantly update their tools. Whenever a new patch comes out, it breaks all the mods and tools for up to a week or two. So releasing micro patches would be a really good counter to this as a small step. I don't know, I honestly think Yoshi P and the dev team are fucking afraid of the Western audience because of previous backlash over the community demanding a male Viera and female Hrothgar. Fucking hell, I think I've ranted enough. Just want to take a moment to thank my Patreons for the support. You literally keep my channel going. Check out the link in the top comment below if you want to support me. You can join for free. Jesus, I need a paracetamol after all this. Honestly, I'm not sure what the ramifications would be like from dropping a big fat fucking nuke on the modding community and banning mods completely from the game. It would definitely be a positive for Square Enix, bringing more money in to fund the game. I can't really say what would happen to the player base, however, as I know there are a lot of degenerates who only play for the ERP social aspect of the game. Yoshi P would have the best guess to that though. One thing I'm sure is fucking shit about though, we'd have record-breaking levels of people going out farming glamour and buying things they want from the Mog Station, especially fucking Fantasias. As a final word on it, do not mod the game, it is not worth the risk. You're a fucking idiot like me if you do, and you don't want to be like me. Okay, now fuck off. See you next time. Yeah, let's get to that ambiente y dice...